Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm really excited today because the new UK government has finally revealed some of their plans, thoughts and changes or let me say potential changes when it comes to UK visas, immigration, recruitment, overseas workers, certificate of sponsorship and literally visa sponsorship. So that's what I'm going to be talking about in today's video. What have they decided to keep? What are they looking to change? And how does this affect you as a person? So whether you are currently in the UK on visa sponsorship or you're still planning to move to this amazing, beautiful country, then you want to watch this video till the end to know what this is all about. And if you haven't joined this family, obviously take this opportunity right now to hit the subscribe button below because you want to be the first person that is notified every single day when I drop a new video on here you know, 10 a.m. prompt, UK time. I'm going to start by saying that I'm very passionate about these changes, updates, opportunities in the UK because I started my own UK journey about 13 years ago as a carer in a nursing home and I now work as an advanced nurse practitioner, which is the most senior clinical nursing job that there is in the profession. I like to talk about this because this is what really motivates me and that is why I always say no matter the rules that the UK government brings or implements or suggests, if you're somebody who is ambitious, is success-driven, you need to carry on with your plans don't let the government's rules or plans deter you from what you want to achieve so whether you're already in the uk or not whatever the rules are if you're somebody who is keen keep pursuing your goals so what is the first thing that they have spoken about you know in this plan the first thing is that the government has acknowledged the positive contribution that skilled workers bring to this amazing country and they have acknowledged that they are going to maintain the skilled worker visa as it is at the moment so again this is something that they have said overall immigrants are very very important they're necessary they're relevant and so they'll carry on with the skilled worker visa but there are changes that they have suggested one thing that they have also said and by the way if you're not aware I do have a free newsletter. I've dropped the link in the comment section below. When you join, then I send information such as this, you know, visa sponsorship opportunities to move to the UK or switch. You know, if you're already in the UK, NHS jobs, apprenticeships, which is where you get paid to work and study at the same time. But most importantly, career progression in the UK. That's what I'm really passionate about. So if you join that newsletter, I send that information directly to your inbox when it becomes available. Also, you'll see my contact details on there. It's my WhatsApp number as well as my email address. If you're watching this and you're thinking, Melvis, I need that one-to-one -one guidance. I need to talk about my own journey, my own UK, you know, experience. I need career progression. I need support with visa sponsorship. My CV, supporting information was the best job for me to apply and all of that. Then I can support you with that process. Like I said, you can get in contact with me at your earliest convenience because I am very, very keen and passionate about all of that because the ultimate goal and objective in the UK is to be able to earn a lot of money work less and get to retire early we are not here to work till we drop if you're struggling in the UK look it should be a temporary thing and not something that is ongoing so that's the first thing that they have confirmed also the so-called short occupation list they are happy to maintain those jobs that are currently on that list as they are so it's very important that if you are applying for visa sponsorship you need to know which jobs actually offer sponsorship so the current government has said that they are going to maintain the current list and there are people, by the way, that are applying for jobs that don't even offer sponsorship at all. And they're like, hey, Melvis, I've been applying for two years. I've been applying for three years. I've been applying for seven months. I'm not getting anything. But guess what? That job doesn't even offer sponsorship. So you need to be very careful, very strategic, very, very wise and smart which jobs you're applying for. Even some people are applying through companies that are not even legally allowed to offer sponsorship. It doesn't make any sense. There's no way you're going to be successful. So you need to make sure that you're looking at your skills, you're looking at your qualifications, you're looking at those companies that are legally you know, licensed to recruit overseas workers. And most importantly, you're only applying for jobs that enable free visa sponsorship for you as an overseas worker. And there is absolutely no difference whether you're in the UK or out of the UK. It is exactly the same process. Because again, I have people contact me saying, Melvis, I'm already in the UK, you know, is it the same thing? I'm like, no, it doesn't matter. The rules are the same, whether you're in the UK or out. So the government has confirmed that those jobs are going to remain the same. The next thing that they have also confirmed is 
that they are going to carry on with the carer visa. So the scheme where overseas workers are currently able to come to the UK to take on carer jobs is going to remain as it is. But they have said that there's going to be a review, obviously, on some aspects of it. And we're going to talk about that as we're going forward. By the way, if you're enjoying this content, I want you to hit the like button below. It lets me know that I enjoy content like this. And obviously, I should do more. If you know somebody that will benefit from this information that is keen on moving to the UK or currently in the UK on visa sponsorship, do share this with them so that they are aware of what these, you know, suggestions, changes, updates are. And it can help them, you know, to be able to make the smartest decisions. These rules and policies and changes are only important because they help you know what to focus on. And I'm going to do subsequent videos on the things that the government has said that those are their top priorities when it comes to jobs. Because where the government is interested in, that's where they're going to put money. And where they put money, that's where opportunities are. And let me tell you something. If you're an overseas worker, you need to gravitate towards the opportunities. Personally, you know, as a nurse, that's why I'm like, I am very unapologetic about the opportunities I go for in the UK. If it's not the best of the best, I am not interested. And look, that's how you should be. And that's why I always say, if you're watching my videos, you need to be part of the top 1% of people. You're not just somebody who is coming onto YouTube to watch video after video and do comments and then do nothing. You need that implementation. So please leave a comment in the comment section and say, Melvis, I will implement this. And also, by the way, during our live session, which we're going to have tomorrow, we are going to go through all these details, all these changes, these suggestions. How do they affect you as an individual? Which jobs should you be focusing on at this point in time? Which ones are offering visa sponsorship more and all of that? If you're not aware, by the way, you know, I do have a private career coaching program where I offer one-to-one -one tailored individualized and personalized guidance. If you're keen to find out more, you can just contact me. My details are in the comment section to find out if this is appropriate or suitable for you. Or you can check the description box below or the about section of this channel and you'll see more information about that coaching program. Like I say, it's only for the top 1% of people. And the live session that we're going to have will start from 8.30 p.m. UK time. It's only for people who've registered. If you haven't registered, you would not be able to attend. And there I say that the live session would not be on YouTube because I know once it's 8.30, I'm going to have a message from people saying, Melvis, you know, I've been on your YouTube channel. It hasn't started. I don't do live sessions. You know, those, those sessions are not on YouTube because you need an environment where we can interact. We can get to really, really be, you know, involved with talking about these changes and really dissecting your personal circumstances to see exactly what they are. So the carer visa is going to remain. But there is something they've said about the carer visa. They have totally agreed with the fact that carers are not allowed to bring dependents. That is something that this government already agreed with, even when they were still the opposition. So when the previous conservative government said that they were going to stop carers bringing dependents, this government was fully in agreement. And so that's something that is not you know, unexpected, that they are saying that you know that is likely going to carry on I don't know how long for, but as of today, that is going to carry on. But there's going to be a massive review when it comes to students bringing their own dependents. And obviously, as I go along, I'm going to talk about that. So when it comes to the salary threshold, in fact, they have said that they're going to have a massive review of the salary threshold that was increased for skilled worker visas to £38,000 by the previous government. So that is going to go under review by the Migration Advisory Committee. So in case you're not aware, by the way, the Migration Advisory Committee is an independent body that advises the UK government on issues concerning migration. For example, which jobs should be offering sponsorship, which jobs should not offer sponsorship, which jobs is the country short of, you know, which jobs would benefit from having immigrants, which jobs would not benefit from having migrants, what about the pay dependents? They are an independent body that advises the UK government. So when many of these changes are made, they consult them and they say, can you get the data for us and then when they bring the data the government can analyze it and then decide how to do what policies to implement what policies to change what policies to leave alone so they have said that the migration advisory committee is going to review the salary threshold of you know it's currently just over thirty-eight thousand pounds and advise whether that should remain 
or it should be reduced. So again, obviously we're going to hear from the Migration Advisory Committee once they have undergone that review and completed it, what the outcome is going to be and indeed what the government is going to decide. We cannot know until all of that has gone through. So this is a suggestion, a proposal and something that it tells us that they are willing to change that. So it is highly likely that the salary threshold is going to change because 38,000 pounds, I can tell you, is a very unrealistic um, expectation of salary. Very few people have qualified, which by default, people have to apply for very low paying jobs. You know, those jobs that are, you know, included on the so-called previously called shortage occupation list. So again, these are some of the things that you need to be aware of if you're currently applying for visa sponsorship. Again, what is your circumstance at the moment? What are you going through? Are you already in the UK? Are you still out of this country? What pathway are you pursuing? If you leave a comment in the comment section, then I can provide more information to you about, you know, your specific pathway that you're considering or that you've chosen. If you are currently in the UK and you are on, you know, a carer visa, for example, you're looking to switch, you're looking for other opportunities, you're looking for career progression, you're looking to get to the NHS, which is my all-time favorite employer, by the way, you're looking for apprenticeship positions that are, like I said, I can support you with that process. But but my coaching program isn't for everybody. It's only for the top 1% of people that, like me, understand that, you know, success only comes through hard work because there's nothing that comes easy. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of effort. You need to show up. You need to implement the things we're talking about. You need to apply for jobs. You need to get shortlisted. You need to be interviewed. You need to be successful before you can get visa sponsorship. And these are legit legal employers that will not charge you anything for visa sponsorship, but they expect excellence from you because as an advanced health practitioner myself i expect nothing but pure excellence from you if you're a healthcare professional if you're being recruited i don't want somebody who is incompetent you know what i mean as a carer as a nurse as a healthcare professional it's unacceptable because if you think about the patients you know put yourself in the shoes of the patient you would want somebody who is competent who knows what the job is about and that is really what i'm about so if you're somebody who like i always say you're just on YouTube to watch videos, you're not into that excellence, you're not part of the top 1%, then please. <laughs> I don't want to say it, but you know what I mean. I like excellence. That's the point. Hard work pays, you know, always at the end. But if you're trying to cut corners initially, it's going to take you years. I can tell you because in the UK, there are no shortcuts to success. There are no shortcuts to success in the UK. I can tell you that now. You can take shortcuts to get here that's possible but once you're here for you to really succeed and excel i can tell you that there are no shortcuts to do that because what takes you from a to b would not take you from b to c and so on and so forth and so these are some of the things that they have said the next thing is regarding student visas and this is a visa that thousands and thousands of overseas you know candidates use to get to this country myself i studied you know nursing in the uk as an international student remember you know at the time I graduated nine years ago and at the time, international students were actually not allowed to study nursing in the UK and I had to push very, very strongly before I got admission. So things have changed dramatically right now from when I studied. And so there are massive changes that they have said, you know, proposed when it comes to student visas, because obviously, as you know, um, there's been a massive crackdown on dependents, you know, some courses, tuition fees and all of that. So the government has said that they're going to review the courses and bringing of dependents. So it is a good thing that is under review, which means that there is a slight chance that more students will be able to bring dependents to the UK. Because what they have found from the data is that with the current changes, there's been a dramatic reduction in the number of international students, obviously, for um, September 2024. But when it comes to the impact on dependents, it hasn't been a lot. And so if you bring an immigration policy and it only affects a handful of people, sometimes you can say, look, there's no point. Let these people bring dependents. So that's what they are looking into on the fact that more international students will be able to bring their dependents or the dependent ban indeed can be lifted. So this is something that is on the review that they have said. So we can only wait for the final outcome. And here, obviously, what they eventually decide. And I think that this is something that is very welcome. If I, when I was reading this, I was like, oh, this is really good. It's something that is really needed because if you're studying 
I think it's fair that you have your family with you. It doesn't matter if the course is two years, if the course is three years, or even just one year, because one year can be a very long time to be away from your loved ones. And I mean, why not be together? So again, if you're interested in studying in the UK, what pathway are you considering? Which courses are you considering? Because currently, all PhD students are allowed to bring their dependents. Uh, master's students that are studying for two years on a research-based program are also allowed to bring dependents. So this is not a band that is on all um, kind of students. It's just for a particular group. So again, if you are keen on applying for these visas, you need to be very strategic and that's why knowing what these policies are, these changes, these updates, these suggestions are, it can help you to make better decisions when it comes to UK visas, immigration, and which pathway indeed you should pursue. One other thing that they have talked about is that they're going to be looking into asylum documents for over 100,000 illegal migrants in the UK. So the other things that we've spoken about are regarding legal migration. Now we're going to talk about illegal migration. And look, there are, I think there are more people under this category than it has been documented by the government, obviously. But it is good news. And this is something that I've already confirmed that they will indeed, you know, give legal status in the UK to over 100,000 migrants. This is something that is really welcome because, as you know, with the Rwanda plan, you know, um, this government has said that that's unacceptable and that is not going to go forward and they have actually halted the deportation of thousands and thousands of, you know, people in the UK that were waiting for those um, documents to be looked into and so that process will now go through while they are in the UK, rightfully so. I mean, this is a policy that when I heard about for the first time, I was like, that's ridiculous. Like, you can't do that to fellow human beings. I mean, if I seek asylum in the UK, why take me to another country to then consider it? And if I'm successful, you bring me back to the... I mean, it's ridiculous. So it's really, really a development that is very much welcome. And by the way, like I said, if you have enjoyed my newsletter, if you check the comment section below, you drop your name and email and you're part of it. And when that information becomes available about those changes, confirmations, updates, visa sponsorship jobs, new opportunities, NHS jobs, apprenticeships, I'm very passionate about all those apprenticeships because in my time in the UK, I've completed two apprenticeships, master's level, and I have personally benefited from these opportunities that I talk about. And that's why I like you to know about them so you can put yourself forward as well. And if you need that one-to-one -one guidance, like I said, check the comment section contact me so that I can support you with that process, but be ready for the hard work. Check this out here.